النهارده ان شاء الله اولى محاضراتنا عن الابدومينال وول وهنبتديها بالابدومينال انسجنس to access the abdominal cavity in any conventional abdominal surgery we approach the abdominal cavity through abdominal incisions for the design of an incision there are many requirements it is better to fulfill these requirements or most of it our requirement محتاجينها the accessibility the incision should give adequate access to the diseased organ and the whole compartment in which it is situated. Then requirement, the accessibility. If a wider exposure is needed, it should be possible to enlarge the incision in the desired direction. The latter, safety. The incision should not injure muscles or their nerve supply and blood supply, so that a strong scar will result. Rubber requirement at this the last and least the cosmetic effect the cosmetic effect an invisible scar is particularly desirable in females provided that the other requirements are satisfied types of abdominal incisions there are three types a will has a vertical incision women amsritha the midline incision or median incision the paramedian incision Transrectal incision and lastly the para rectal incision. Hanipti hum bilkalam and in midline incision. It is a very popular incision because it provides good access to both sides of the abdomen and can be made quickly and enlarged freely. The drawback betato in its healing capacity is poor and the use of proline non-absorbable suture or stainless steel wire sutures is advisable to prevent breast abdomen and incisional hernia. The technique في عندي two types of this incision the median epigastric incision above the umbilicus and the median suprapubic incision. The median epigastric one is the upper abdomen, the skin and linea alba are divided from the foid process to the umbilicus and then the protonium with the fascia transversalis are divided a little to one side of the middle line to avoid the false form ligament. The incision is closed in three layers, protonium to protonium with a continuous suture of chromocyzed cut gut, linea alba of both sides with interrupted sutures of proline and lastly the skin as a third layer with interrupted sutures of silk. In the lower abdomen, which is the median suprapubic incision, the linea alba is not well defined, is not well defined because it is thin and narrow and lies mainly in front of the recti. It should be identified by its barely white color and interlacing fibers. If by mistake the rectus sheath is mistakenly opened, the pyramidalis serve as a guide. The paramedian incision, the second one, it is the safest incision as it doesn't injure any muscles, nerve or vessels and since the rectus is displaced laterally during exposure and replaced during during closure it enjoys a trapdoor like effect which renders the scar exceptionally strong the incision provides good access to almost any part of the abdomen as it may be situated to the right or to the left of the midline and either above upper paramedian or below the umbilicus lower paramedian incision. The right paramedial paramedian incision is situated partly above and partly below the umbilicus. It is a standard exposure for exploratory laparotomy in cases of abdominal injury, peritonitis and intestinal obstruction. The only disadvantage of the paramedian incision is that it takes much time to do and to close. 
technique the incision is made parallel and one inch from the midline dividing dividing the skin the anterior rectus sheath in the same in the same line the upper abdomen the anterior rectus sheath must be separated from the muscle by sharp dissection as it is adherent at the tendinous intersections the rectus is then displaced is then displaced laterally to expose the posterior rectus sheath which is divided together with the transversalis fascia and bretonium a little lateral to the line of the skin incision the incision is closed in three layers the posterior rectus sheath as one layer and bretonium as one layer with chromocyzed cut gut continuous cut gut the anterior rectus sheath was interrupted synthetic and lastly the skin with silk sutures third type of vertical incision is a transrectal incision is similar to the paramedian incision but instead of displacing the rectus it is split in the line of the wound the scar is not as strong as that of the paramedian incision since the trapdoor effect is lost and the medial strip of muscle is deprived of its nerve supply so the incision the incision is limited and useful in children as it can be performed quickly and the atrophy of the muscle the medial strip is compensated during growth the fourth type the pararectal or battles incision was devised for appendectomy to give direct access to the appendix the technique is similar to the lower right paramedian but the incision is made over the lateral third of the rectus above the level of anterior superior leg spine and the muscle the rectus i mean is displaced medially the incision is rarely employed or even abandoned nowadays because it can't be enlarged downward without injury to the subcostal and iliohypogastric nerves and the medial displacement of the rectus may damage its nerve supply Tiny time in abdominal incisions are the transverse incisions for example the transverse epigastric lens incision and finasteel incision a Wilhelm is the Kocher incision is the transverse epigastric incision the incision provides good access to all of the structures of the abdomen and can be readily prolonged into the chest if necessary thoraco abdominal approach those rectiles divided the scar is strong because nerve supply is segmental and the abdominal incision exerts as a reinforcing rather than disruptive effect on the closure however the incision is time consuming and often attended with troublesome bleeding from the superior epigastric vessels the technique the skin is divided transversely midway between the void process and the umbilicus and the recti and their sheaths are divided transversely in the same line of the incision the incision is closed in three layers bretonium and posterior rectus sheath as one layer the anterior sheath as second layer and skin as the third layer the recti are not sutured as they are adherent to their anterior sheath at the tendinous intersection Tiny norm in abdominal incisions, transverse abdominal incisions, is a transverse suprapubic incision or finasteel incision. This is widely used by gynecologists as, as it provides good access to the pelvic viscera and the scar is thin and hidden by the pubic hair. Technique The skin and anterior rectus sheaths are incised transversely in the line of the interspinous crease. The recti are widely separated 
and held apart by retractors and then transversalis fascia and plutonium are incised vertically in the mid line. Lens incision is the third type. It is a modification of McBurney's incision in which the skin is divided transversely along the interspinous crease. But the deeper layers are dealt with as in the classical incision. The incision is increasingly popular because the scar is cosmetic and the exposure is readily and the exposure is readily enlarged, can be readily enlarged by media retraction of the rectus abdominis. The third variant of abdominal incisions are the oblique incisions, examples Kocher's incision, McBurney's incision, and oblique iliac incision. I will missile the Kocher subcostal incision is popular for cholecystectomy splenectomy and systemic shunts. However, it can be enlarged freely as it carries great risk of damage to the 8th, 9th and 10th intercostal nerve. The technique, the incision extends obliquely parallel 2 and 1 inch below the costal margin from the midline medially to the tip of the 10th costal cartridge laterally the layers including the rectus and its sheaths are divided in the same line of the incision. The incision is closed in four layers, bretonia and rectus sheath as the first layer, internal oblique and transverse abdominis as the second layer, anterior rectus sheath and external oblique as the third layer, and lastly the skin as the fourth layer. The second variant of oblique incisions the McBurney incision it is the most popular incision for appendectomy because it provides the most direct access to the appendix and the closure is very secure since the muscles are split in the direction of their fibers producing a great iron effect. However, the incision is not readily extensible and damage to the ongoing nervous paralysis of conjoint tendor is a common complication if it is sighted more lateral than desired. The incision is also employed for cecostomy and oleostomy in the right side and for pelvic colostomy in the left side. Technique It is a 2 inches incision which is made at right angles to the line joining the anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus with its center at the left and with its center at the level and at the level of and one inch medial to the anterior superior iliac spine. The external oblique is split in the line of its fibers which is the same as the line of the incision. The edges of the external oblique are retracted to the to expose the internal oblique, which is split together with the underlying transverse abdominis muscle in one line almost at, right, at right angle to that of external oblique. The bretonium and transversalis fascia are then picked up as one layer and divided in the same line of the incision. The third type of oblique incisions is the oblique iliac incision or abernathy incision. This incision provides good access to the colon and is often employed for extra bretonian exposure of the ureter, the sympathetic, lumbar sympathetic trunk and external iliac vessels. It can be extended readily without injury to important nerves but division of the muscles predisposes to incisional hernia. Technique The incision extends from a point one and a half inches above and medial to the anterior superior iliac spine to a point one inch above the middle of inguinal ligament. The external oblique is split in the direction of its fibers but the internal oblique and transversus are divided 
in the line of the incision. Complications of abdominal incisions or complication hematoma it is an important as it predisposes to infection. Breast abdomen and incisional hernia should be avoided by proper hemostasis and if any dead space is present by insertion of a drain. Tiny complication infection which may take the form of stitch abscess or sinus or even deep abscess cellulitis or melanin ulcer. The third most co important complication is the breast abdomen which is a very serious complication occurs a week or more after operation. It usually develops suddenly so that the bowel prolapses through the skin which is a complete breast type but sometimes the plutonium and muscles only give way while the skin remains intact over the prolapsing bowel which is partial breast. Commonly a serosanulous discharge is often a warning sign which is a signal of impending breast abdomen. Etiology of breast abdomen Preoperative causes which is in the patient side including malnutrition, anemia, dehydration, hypoproteinemia and cachexia, debilitating disease particularly malignancy, diabetes and cirrhosis, obesity, patient with respiratory problems as chronic bronchitis, bronchial asthma and chronic obstructive lung disease. The nature of the primary disease for which the operation was performed, for example, patients with malignancy are usually malnourished and patients with brutalites will have abdominal distension and secondary wound infection. Operative causes, which is in the surgeon side, including extensive traumatization and devitalization of tissues, defective hemostasis, inadequate closure, muscle cutting incisions are more liable to burst than muscle splitting ones. Vertical incisions have a higher incidence of burst than the transverse ones. The use of absorbable sutures in the closure of a pneumatic layer of an abdominal wound. The insertion of a drain tube through the main wound. Classically, drainage tube should be extrorized through a separate step from that of the main of the incision. In the Mutaka, we have to give an infected material. If we have to from the main incision, it will be an infection which predisposes to breast abdomen. Post operative causes delayed healing due to hematoma, infection, or cortisone therapy, increased intra abdominal pressure. Due to persistent cough, vomiting, and distension, heart convalescence without adequate support of the wound, and lastly, stormy recovery. Treatment by immediate closure after correcting shock by morphia, transfusion, temporary sterile gauze dressing, and urgently the prolapsed abdominal contents are washed gently with warm saline and returned to the abdomen where they are retained by a moist pack. Repair is then carried out by means of through and through sutures of silk suture or stainless steel wire which should be threaded through short segments of rubber tubing so that they don't cut through the, the skin. Additional sutures are then inserted to draw together the abinosis and skin, but accurate coaptation should be. Then, urgently, the prolapsed abdominal contents are washed gently with warm saline and returned to the abdomen, where they are retained by a moist pack. Repair is then carried out by means of through and through sutures of silk, thin thick silk or stainless steel wire which should be threaded through short segments of rubber tubing so that they don't cut through the skin. 
additional sutures are then inserted to draw together the abnormalities and skin. But accurate coaptation should be avoided to allow free drainage. After treatment, the general condition is improved by transfusion, plasma and vitamins and the infection is controlled by chemotherapy and antibiotics. Locally, the wound is supported by a firm corset of adhesive plaster and the stitches are kept for at least two to three weeks, after which an abdominal binder or corset is used for several months. The last complication is the incisional hernia, which may be due to yielding of scar, which is the cicatricial incisional hernia, or due to damage of the nerves, which is the paralytic variant of incisional hernia. Its causes are the same of that of pressed abdomen. Can you know I mean surgeries rather than the conventional one that we're going to be talking about through the abdominal incisions is the minimal access surgery. So what's meant by minimal access surgery? It is that type of surgery which can be performed by either by either through a natural body orifices using fiber optic endoscopy or through fine stabs that are used to introduce rigid endoscopes into the plutonium, pleura, and joint cavities. Laparoscopy is a well-developed well technique and many operations can be done through it. Frequently performed laparoscopic operations like cholestectomy, appendectomy, inguinal hernia repair, bariatric surgery, fundoblication for gastroesophageal reflux disease, gynecologic operations, tubal ligation, and tubal adhesolysis. Steps through general anesthesia. The second step is insufflation of the plutonial cavity with carbon dioxide gas. A trocar and cannula are inserted usually at the umbilicus. The trocar is removed and the cannula is used to introduce the telescope in inspection of proteinal cavity and then the other ports are inserted under direct vision through the abdominal wall to allow the introduction of instruments. Advantages minimal postoperative pain, minimal impairment of pulmonary functions, fast recovery and early return to normal activities the ability to visualize and explore the whole abdominal and pelvic organs, video recording of the operative procedures with obvious educational advantages, better appearance, and decreased wound problems as dehesions or infection. Drawbacks the need for well trained surgeons, the high cost of the equipment, post operative shoulder pain which is usually caused by irritation and stretching of the diaphragm by carbon dioxide gas. Conversion of laparoscopic surgery into conventional surgery is not a complication of the technique, but it is a change of the strategy in dealing of the patient with the patient. It is indicated in the following situations considering that the safety of the patient is the absolute priority. Our indication for conversion is the equipment failure between dense adhesions or ab anatomical abnormalities precluding their performance of the procedure. Talata, uncontrolled bleeding, accidental injuries requiring open repair. Lastly, Diagnostic laparoscopy is rapidly gaining popularity in certain situations. For example, determination of the cause of acute lower abdominal pain, like acute pelvic appendicitis, torsion of an ovarian cyst, so it is used in differentiation and settlement of diagnosis, 
determination of the extent of malignant disease, staging of malignancy, like small liver secondaries or Bretonian nodules. Lastly, implant abdominal trauma to detect the, the exact injury, the extent of the exact injury. Even in sharp abdominal injuries, it determines if it is penetrating or not. Thank you.